welcome. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. This video was supposed to be about defense. Um, and it is. This video will dive into defense, um, a specific coverage in the defense. Okay. But it's so hard to tackle one subject at a time when it comes to talking football because football is such a <clears throat> it's a sport that synergizes with itself in every um category of football like it's it's hard to talk about defense without including offense it's hard to talk about pass protection without talking about blitzing schemes you know what i mean so it's really hard to just focus on one subject in a particular video without venturing off into other subjects because they all kind of tie in with one another. Everything kind of complements each other in football. It's such a beautiful sport. Um, and we're kind of stuck with playing a game that's supposed to simulate football, but doesn't. It's supposed to simulate real football, but it doesn't on like every level imaginable. You know, I see a lot of guys trying to cut Madden developers slack for the product that they give us every year and at the end of the day it is just unacceptable it is just absolutely un unacceptable Re always remember what i what i'm, I'm going to say this probably in every video wh where i'm dealing with this the more you learn about football the way it's played the more you understand real football the more you will hate madden because it's just not even close to how it's supposed to be done, okay? So <laughs> this video was supposed to be about defense, about a beautiful coverage. We're going to go over it later, okay? The, the specific concept of the coverage, okay? Um, but we ran into an issue um, that I wanted to showcase to you. We're, we're supposed to be talking about defense, so let's talk about defense, right? Let's talk about this beautiful defense my opponent displayed on me uh, the other day. Uh, you know, I'm killing them with the Giants 21 to 7. Okay, a terrible team that I'm running, right? But I'm running it with my scheme from OnlyFans.com. Just had to throw that in there. And, you know, I want you to look at the situation here. Second quarter, one second left, right? You know, we're going to go ahead and kick it, get up 24 7, go to the second half. And um, I think I was getting the ball second half, too. I'm not sure. I, I think we'll see it here, right? So let's look at this defense. You're thinking defense. What are you talking about, right? If, is it in this clip? Yeah, it's right here. I want you to watch what he does. Wait, let's, let's look at our opponent here. Look at him casually just come up. You know, I, I thought, okay, he's just throwing the game away because he, he, you know, he feels as if he just doesn't have a chance. Uh, we've been doing really good. He's dancing here. He's not even going to go to the end zone because he knows I'm just going to accept the penalty and just go ahead and kick it, you know. Is what it is, 24-7, easier kick, I accept. And uh, no, we're going to go to the third quarter now. We're going to go to the third quarter. We're just... Okay, so I was kicking. But yeah, we went to the third quarter. What's wrong with that picture, guys? Uh, I don't even have to go look at the rule book. I'm not going to even do it. I'm not going to even look up the NFL rules when it comes to that situation because I am 99.99% sure that if that instance were to happen in the league okay uh first of all the guy who would go outside and do something stupid like that the coach would immediately put him on the sideline for the rest of the game and he'd be probably yelled at right because you just gave them an extra five yards to make the kick easier okay well, what why are you doing that okay but at the end of the day in my estimate the offense would accept the penalty and they would get another chance at kicking the ball it wouldn't just go immediately to the third quarter so, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there. It's just something that they have wrong in the game because they don't like what in this game tells you that they are going super hard and trying to put out the best product. They're giving their maximum effort. What give me anything in the game that showcases to you that these guys are trying their absolute best to put a NFL simulated product on in the game for us to play i can't find not one thing everything is messed up everything is wrong look at all these patches that they keep coming up with because the game is garbage i just have to say it it's, it's bad and they're exploiting our love for football 
with their product because they know they're the only ones who can put out a game with the NFL on it. So they can get away with murder, and they have for 20 years now. They've been just killing us with this garbage, right? So, you know, I had to put that on there, NFL rules. Um, and in this video, um, it was titled, you know, What Madden Has Wrong. That was the first part. I guess this will be part two, even though it's supposed to be about defense. And I'm, I'm going to get into defense really soon, okay? But in the first video, I had a W and an X. W stands for something that they have wrong. X ha stands for something that they just don't have in the game. And we were just going to build on that, okay? It'd be impossible for me to put every single thing that Madden has wrong in the in uh, on this sheet here. We would need about 50 sheets. Maybe more, okay? So shifting... It's just not in the game. We're talking about offensive shifting, even though that's in football, right? It's not in the game. So if, if something is in real football, but it's not in the game, then you can't call the game a simulated version of football because you're not simulating real football because you have stuff that's in football that's not in your game, right? Here's the thing. Shifting was in a previous Madden when it's not Madden anymore. They just took it out. Probably because they're so, I don't know what it is. Could it be laziness that they don't want to code it right? that instead of them having an extra thing to have to code right, they just said, let's just get it out of the game, right? So shifting's not in the game. Classic playbooks isn't in the game. It used to be in the game. Someone pointed to it being in Madden 25, um, you know, the Joe Gibbs playbook. It's not in the game anymore. Why? I, I, I don't understand. Like, you have the coding in the game in Madden 25 to have these playbooks, you know, Joe Gibbs playbooks, etc. I was asking for stuff like Mike Mart's playbooks. How about the Don Coriel playbook? Uh, how about the, the San Diego Superchargers with Dan Fouts? You know, how about those playbooks? You know, uh, like, come on, make the, make the game more interesting with stuff like that. You know, not in the game. Play action, wrong. We went over that in the last video. And then we have NFL rules. We'll just put wrong. Here's the thing. NFL rules is a category in itself. I can't just put NFL rules and then that's it. We would have to put that situation that we just saw on screen as one of the NFL rules that you have wrong. How about all the other NFL rules that you probably have wrong in the game? You know, so that would need a page in itself. We're putting an entire category here that you have wrong. Okay, but we can branch off into different things of the rules that you have wrong. And I'm pretty sure there's probably an infinite amount. Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna I'm gonna eventually put it on screen. We're gonna have defensive logic that they have wrong, but we're also gonna go into a particular coverage, and we're gonna talk about the strategies of that coverage. Um, trying to get see, this is what I mean by I can't make a video based on just one thing, because other things have to be included. Like I want to talk about the trap coverage, the concept of the coverage, the strategies of the coverage. But we have to work around the inconsistencies of that co coverage that's in the game because they don't have it coded right. It's horrible. These guys are horrible. So uh, I'm going to put a guy's face on the screen, and he will be the spokesperson for this particular coverage that I'm talking about. And it's Greg Williams. Uh, Greg Williams... Um, you may know him if you're a little bit older. See, I'm 34. So, yeah, yeah, I'm a middle-aged guy playing Madden. But, you know, it's really the only type of game that I play. Um, I think I only play, like, two games. But you know, I'm into Madden. Not Madden. <laughs> not the actual. Like, I'm into football. That's the more accurate statement. Like, I love football. I mean, the only way I can play something that somewhat tries to simulate football is with Madden um, because that's the only they, they have a monopoly on the NFL anyways um, so you may know Greg Williams from 2009 um, him being the defensive coordinator for the New Orleans Saints and that was the year that they won the Super Bowl I think the year before head coach Sean Payton brought one million dollars out of his own pocket to hire Greg Williams um, and that's because they had an offense obviously with Drew Brees but they just had so many defensive problems and it was like it didn't matter how many points that they would score the second that Drew Brees and the offense would have an off night you can just 
consider that a loss, right? So he went ahead and he hired Greg Williams. And Greg Williams was a, not was, is a very aggressive defensive coordinator, I would say. And, you know, he was the type of guy that liked to take risk, but not, you know, more of a high reward, low risk type of deal is probably the best way to put it. Okay, he would do that with a coverage. It's like a trap coverage. Okay, and that's what I'm going to get into. And that's the thing with football. It's like I can look at a defense. I could look at how the defense is called during a season, even a, a game. And I can tell you without knowing the defensive coordinator, their personality. Your personality comes forth in the way you call games. It really does. So take a look at, think of the Chicago Bears with, you know, Earl Lacker, Briggs, uh, Tommy Harris in their cover two days. Okay, think about the scheme, the cover two scheme. You know, I get a well-mannered kind of conservative, you know, uh, not take a big risk type of guy. And that's the type of personality that Lovey Smith kind of reflects, right? Now think of like the Jets with Rex Ryan's defenses. The we're going to blitz cover zero on third and seven, third and six, sometimes second and five. We don't care. We're, we're bringing pressure. That's our, our idea, right? Yeah, well, that reflects the nature of Rex Ryan, a fiery guy, a, you know, no nonsense type of guy, that sort of thing. Like your personality comes out in the way you call games. It's, it's just how football is. That's why it's just such a beautiful sport. I think I already said that already. Okay. So Greg Williams he was a guy that he wants to take, he wants to get to the quarterback. He wants to, you know, knock the head off the body, so to speak. Okay, but he did it in a way in which he limited the big play. And that's what he did with the trap two uh, coverage. He would design blitzes with that coverage to try to get the quarterback to throw something quick right into a, a you know, a corner on the outside waiting for the ball coming towards his way. Okay, it, it, it's designed to bait you into throwing uh, certain patterns, throwing hot, and et cetera. And we're going to get into that. You know, another coordinator, I think, that uh, you, utilizes, uh, well, utilized um, a lot of trap coverage schemes was Dick LeBeau. Um, remember, he was the guy, the defensive coordinator of the Steelers for a while. So I've, I've heard, you know, I, I'm not really sure if he really did. I, you know, I remember he ran a lot of zone blitzing schemes, but I've heard that he, he ran, um, you know, some trap coverages as well with pressure behind it. You know, real, you know, real creative stuff, right? So here's a, here's an example of the cover two trap scheme. And, you know, this is without pressure. Okay. So this is just a vanilla look at it. Okay. And this is from uh, Matt Bowen. Um, I believe this was on Inside the Pylon, uh, you know, bleacherreport.com. So all credit goes to him on this diagram, okay? But this is a coverage where they're running cover six, and on the cover two side of cover six, they're running the trap coverage, okay? So essentially what, what happens here is you look at the cornerback, he's reading the number two, okay? It's designed to look like it's a traditional cover two, like maybe he's a cloud flat corner, and this vertical route will draw him up the field a bit, which would open up a window for you to throw an out route, an out pattern to this number two, especially with the wheel backer with inside leverage, right? But the corner in the trap coverage is reading the release of the number two, okay? So he's gonna you know, climb up a bit with the number one, but he's reading the number two, and when the number two runs an out pattern, a flat pattern, anything to the flat, he will jump that route, okay? And the beauty of that is, you know, he can get a really big hit on that um, out pattern because it's it's an aggressive uh, technique here. And in the best case scenario, get a pick. And if you get a pick in this situation right here, I mean, he's gonna take it to the house, right? Um, now, in this instance, the safety should be reading the number two as well. The number two is this guy. If the number two goes to the flat, the safety should know that the corner is going to play that route aggressively. So he needs to climb over the top of the number one and top that route. Okay. Now your second defender in, it's probably not the best phrasing to put him, um, but the guy who's supposed to cover the number two, 
okay? Um, you know, it's best for him to play inside leverage, and he's going to be playing inside this pattern on such a route, like an out pattern or a flat. But if this guy were to climb up the field, then he can match that route, okay, and carry him in man-to-man, -man. okay? I, it may depend on the scheme. I, I believe some teams may have it to where you just kind of carry him to a certain depth and then maybe come back um, and play your zone responsibilities, who knows, et cetera, you know, but um, you should get the, the gist of what I'm getting at with the trap cover two coverage. The thing with Greg Williams is he got creative with it. I'm not going to say that he's the first one to come with it, so don't come kill me for it, okay? But he would design blitz packages with the trap coverage. And, um, you know, the, the model was to get the quarterback to see a lot of pressure, see a, a pressure package coming at him, and want to throw hot, thinking that a particular receiver will be open based upon the blitz package, throwing right into... Of coverage to get an interception or a big hit, etc. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at some of that, and here's an example here. So, here's the thing. I mean, um, you know, knowing that Greg Williams is the defensive coordinator of the Jets, I think I went to the Jets playbook, their defensive playbook. I'm like, okay, so there's got to be a lot of trap coverage, you know, looks in their playbook with with blitz packages you know from the second and first level etc and it, there was like close to you know maybe four plays in there I mean that that tells me that they're not really they're not really replicating what a particular defense does or the defensive coordinator you know this whole idea that you know we're we're putting together playbooks of actual teams in the game yeah, you know, I really believe that they really just find six or seven plays that a particular offense runs, and then they just throw them in the game, and, oh, hey, that's their play. That, that's what they do, guys. That this entire playbook replicates what they do. I don't even believe that they actually, you know, put the entire playbook of what a team does in the game because I don't think that they actually watch real football. I actually don't think that they watch, you know, the entirety of the Rams season under the offensive coordinator, and they – you know, replicate what he does with his team into their playbooks in the game. I don't think that they do that. You know, like the, the more popular ones, like remember the Chiefs ran some play that they titled Wasp. They put that in the game and go, go and try to run that play. That play is horrible. You can't tell me that the play in the game of Madden works the way that it does on the field in real football. It's because this game, the, the, the developers are terrible, man. It just is what it is, okay? But let's look at this screen here. Here's a, um, an example. Again, this is from Matt Bowen. Um, so all credits to him on this particular diagram here, okay? But it showcases, you know, the beauty in developing. This is Greg Williams' scheme here. And look at what's going on here. But it's a trap coverage behind on both sides of the field, okay? So we're just going to look at the the bottom half cover two is a split safety coverage so you can have a coverage on this side totally independent of what's going on on this side okay those are the coverages i like to run like cover four cover two cover six that sort of thing okay so this guy is going to come on a pressure on a blitz and take a look at this this uh this linebacker here he's going to be the vertical hook drop inside the number two which is this guy here right so when this quarterback sees the pressure coming in from this guy and the linebacker seems to be the only guy coming out to cover the number two maybe they'll have a hot read designed into it where the number two is reading this player and whenever he comes on a pressure just turn it into an out or a flat and the problem with that against his coverage is this guy is reading the number two. And when he sees the number two go out in that particular instance, you know, it may seem as if he's going to ride the number one who's coming up the field on whatever route he's coming. He's just going to drop him off to the safety. And he's going to jump that route aggressively, hopefully get a pick six or a really big hit. Okay, because it's, it's a trap coverage. Now, in this instance, if this guy were to climb up the field, then this guy can match that route and you know obviously he would be underneath the route but then you have the safety over the top topping that in his deep half responsibility okay 
So, you know, that's that's the beauty of, I mean, he has it going on on both sides. Pressure on this side, this guy is reading the release of the number two, and the inside backer who's looking like he's coming, he's, you know, going to uh, deal with the the number two receiver if he comes up field, you know, match it or however they have it, either match or carry it up to the safety and come down. Theoretically, you know, in my estimation, you probably always match him, right? Because you wouldn't want him to hook drop and the corner's riding underneath the number one and now the safety is topping both of those routes and that second receiver in could just, you know, be wide open because you carried him to a certain depth and then you just dropped him off. You really would just want to match him, in my estimation. So here's another look. I mean, you can pause it and look at it yourself. I'm not going to go over it. Um, but, I mean, look at all the different pre-snap looks you can give them and still be playing a too deep look behind with a trap coverage involved in it. So as you can see, this cornerback is the squat trap corner. You have pressure coming from that side, and obviously you're going to have a guy. Right, see, he's all the way inside leverage matching the number two of this tight end here. Okay. So maybe, you know, again, the offense might have it to where, hey, this guy's coming. Hey, tight end, go, you know, run your out pattern or a flat pattern, and we're going to throw you hot, and the cornerback can jump that aggressively. And here, in this article here, um, we showcase an actual interception. Not we, but this is Matt Bowen again uh, with great, I mean, this is great stuff here that he had uh, and uh, diagrammed up based upon a playoff game, I believe, from way back where, you know, we got a trap number two. I mean, we've got a trap coverage with pressure implicated, with pressure in the coverage. You know, I'm, I'm jumping all over words here. Okay, so this cornerback is reading the release of the number two, and when the number two runs this little out pattern, he gets to jump it aggressively. And as you can see, the guy who's supposed to match the number two is playing inside leverage of that guy. It gives the illusion that you're giving away the outside. I mean, that's what he's given. Now, I'm playing inside leverage of this guy, so an outside breaking route should be open. But you're just going to run right into the corner who's reading the release of that player, right? And then when you couple with pressure, as you see here, I mean, um, you know, again, on against certain offenses, they may have out patterns within their system to beat that type of pressure, and you're just throwing right into the trap. Then take a look at the pre-snap read we have here. They have it in single high. That's, you know, it's the beauty of this coverage, you know, so... You know, near the snap of the ball, maybe he rotates, maybe even right at the snap of the ball, he rotates over because he's the deep half safety on this side. Okay, so he's showing single high, and he's stemming to top the number one. It's just really good stuff. You know, let me go back a little bit, too. You know, think about the beauty of this, too. When the quarterback sees single high with pressure, what does that tell you? That tells you that it's one-on-one. -on -one. You think it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside here, man-to-man, -man, and you think this guy is one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason is because you're, the defense is given an illusion that this cornerback doesn't have help over the top because it's single high. So he can't play real aggressive on this guy, and this guy has got to be locked up man-to-man. -man. Okay, But that's the problem. We are showing that we don't have help over the top of these two corners, but in actuality we do. So, you know, we're, we're awarded the ability to jump all over it. But in that instance, you may say, well, there's no way he can jump all over the out route anyway because he's playing inside leverage. But we have this corner sitting right there. It's just a beautiful coverage. It looks beautiful when done right. And here it is in action right here. I think I'm going to run it a couple of times. Again, this is from Matt Bowen. Corner's sitting on it. And he just rides all over that route. Picks it off, almost scores, but that's the beauty of the coverage. So is this particular concept in the game? Yeah, the, well, the, there's plays in the game that are, that kind of replicates uh, what we're trying to get at here. So let's go ahead and get into that. The problem is uh, it's just not nowhere near unique enough to simulate the different things that we see here. Let's get into that now. So they do have it in the game, um, at least the concept of bringing pressure with a trap coverage behind it. 
and you know as I probably spoke about earlier um, you know the whole idea of it is to limit the big play while also including um, deception underneath to hopefully get a sack based upon the blitz scheme that you have going on with a trap coverage behind it to get the quarterback to throw hot into maybe the flat so maybe you can get a really big hit with your corner or in best case scenario a interception okay and in that instance usually when you get an interception from a soft squatting corner uh, you're going to get um, a touchdown because he's going the other way he's he's uh based upon his position and, and where he's at when he gets the football okay so you know here you know here's an instance if you've seen this i'm pretty sure you have you've probably called it once or twice you know or something like this um it's the same deal we're bringing pressure and we're playing cover two behind it with soft squatting corners and uh the reading and concepts of it is different than your traditional cover two so So here I go by a two by two set. Um, you don't want to run this. You don't want to run this against trips because uh, I'm just not going to get into it. Primarily, you want to do it against uh, two by two sets. So here you see that. That's the pre-snap movement. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just so... It, it, the, the game is so bad, it's laughable. I, I'm just sick of it, man. Like, You ever notice when you call this, they always do that pre-snap movement? And I guess they do that because they understand that, you know, the... <laughs> the trap to, you know, like with uh, Greg Williams, you know, it's all about, you know movement pre-snap like you want it to look one way and then you know and then it's actually something else the problem is with this pre-snap movement it's like it's so predetermined it's right when we're walking to the line of scrimmage that no one in their right mind who's on the offensive side of the ball when they see this aren't thinking oh it's that trap two that i uh well you know they may not say trap two but they they know what it is because they've seen it because they've ran the same play and you get the same movement the problem is with this movement there's multiple problems for one you don't get the same movement with other defensive coverages with it so it's not balanced right when i see this i can automatically assume that you called the cover two with some type of blitz package behind it right you don't have enough coverages with the same movement to balance it so you know why not have this same movement with like cover four behind it you know or the same movement with cover one behind it etc you know so it's it's really not balanced granted you can audible out of this to make it look the same and that's what i do you know i'll call this so i can get this pre-snap movement and then i'll check into cover one or cover two man etc and i confuse a lot of people by doing that that's something that you can implement into your scheme so that's a little tip there okay but i shouldn't have to audible out to do that you know if you're gonna have this pre-snap movement in the game then it should be balanced with multiple coverages with that pre-snap movement. So that's one thing that's wrong. Another thing that's wrong is the pre-snap movement is like, you know, coded in a way where it's it comes at the same time every time. Why, you know, the, the point of pre-snap movement is like, you wanna disguise the coverage and then you wanna rotate as late as possible into the correct coverage so you're aligned properly right so like if you have a safety here and then you have your free safety here at the line of scrimmage and we're actually playing cover two zone so he's actually supposed to be there okay based upon film if you notice that the quarterback around the four seconds left on the play clock that's when he snaps the ball well you want to hold this position at 16 seconds to go on the play clock like a Peyton Manning you know this may be one of the times where you try to try to confuse him so he comes out he's making his cadence you know red 19 and and blue goat radio whatever he says whatever thing he's doing to get his offense into the play he wants to call and then around eight seconds 
your safety will hurry up and get maybe the safety will move over to where they're supposed to be because you don't want it to where you snap the ball and you're here and you're supposed to playing be playing deep half because then now this outside receiver you know marvin harrison i don't care if he was supposed to run a drag he may see that see the corner sitting and just blow right by him and he's just wide open for a touchdown that's the importance of being aligned properly see disguising coverage is designed to kind of like it's to deceive okay but there's a weakness to that and there's always a weakness to whatever you do the weakness is your alignment you because you're aligned up here and you're supposed to play deep half you're not able to do your responsibility at you know maximum capability now when you have like a freak like troy palomalu ed reed they used to do stuff because they just they increased the deception maybe ed reed was supposed to be playing deep half here so you would want him to align like around here, right? Well, pre-snap, the man is all the way over here on the line of scrimmage. He's making it look like he's coming out of pressure. Think about the multiple things that does to an offense because you don't know he's supposed to be playing deep half. You don't know that he's supposed to be over here, right? So you see him here, and you may see the other safety here. So you're like, okay, it's single high, and they're bringing pressure. Like you're thinking he may be coming – you know, this corner may be coming, this guy may be coming. So you call your protection scheme to get a slide going left, and then you got man-to-man -man going this side, okay? When in reality, you may be able to design maybe something like we got something going on here, like a trap cover two, where this guy's coming, this guy's coming, and then maybe a corner is going to come late on a pressure here. And you just rely on Ed Reed with such great awareness he just has a feel for when the ball is going to be snapped. At the last moment, he just hightails himself way over here, and he's playing deep half over there. That's how great he was. Um, him and Troy Palomalu was just disgusting, right? They could do things like this, and they would add more deception to your defense. I mean, if you were a defensive coordinator with those guys on your teams, I mean, you would absolutely love it. I think Rex Ryan was the coordinator of the Ravens um, with the safe, uh, for a while. I don't know when, but I, I think – yeah, I think he was. He was a coordinator of the Ravens when they were just destroying teams uh, with their defense with, you know, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and all different types of pressure packages. I can only imagine the different things that they would do with Ed Reed, give him a lot of, you know, a lot of clearance to do whatever he wants to do. But, again, I mean, that's that's what pre-snap. But, he, you know, with the game, again, it's just so predetermined with this movement pre-snap. And then I, I know you've been irritated by this, too. Let's say you call this, and then you shift the defensive line left. Your blitzing safety, who rotated down, will then rotate back up to deep half. So then you have to click all the way over to him and move him down manually. Because it's like, why did you move? Because I shifted the D-line. This game is horrible. It, it's worse on the defensive side of the ball. I think someone asked me, well, what do you do defensively? Because you show a lot of offensive stuff. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, I, I do a lot of different defensive things, but, you know, I'm really going to tell you this to, for the truth. The truth of the fact is defense is 30 times worse than the offense in this game. So you're going to have a hard time on defense no matter what. OK, um, unless you're doing a whole bunch of gimmick stuff to try to exploit and find bugs in the game. That's what a lot of people do. I just refuse to do it. Um, but you know, you're going to you're going to struggle a lot on defense when it comes to this game because there's just multiple issues. You just do not get enough pressure on the quarterback, and that's the biggest problem. You know, when you rush four, forget about it. When you try to blitz, they they have the <laughs> offensive line. Like, the, the user doesn't have to call the protection scheme. You don't have to ID the mic. You don't have to kind of figure out where the blitz is coming from, where to call your protection, because the game automatically has it to where they do it for you. Right, So that takes away an entire element of the game of football away from the game because you don't have to worry about calling pressure, um, you know, calling the right protection. So if I bring seven on a pressure, all you have to do is just make sure you have seven blocking or six blocking you get the ball out before the seventh man comes. You don't have to worry about calling the right protection scheme because the game does it for you. Okay, but let's just go ahead and get into this coverage. Like, you know, I, I can go on and on about this game. It's so bad. 
So here we go. I, I think I called it again. So in this instance, this corner is in trap two. So he's eyeing the number two here. So you got your one, you got your two. If the two takes an outside breaking route, like in this instance, a flat, then he's going to, he wants to make it seem like he's riding up with number one, but then he will break on that route, okay? And with the number one going up the field, the safety should be eyeing the number two as well. And when he sees the number two go to the flat, then he needs to top the number one, okay? So that's the basis of the trap coverage. Now, when you include it with pressure, the idea is you want to get this quarterback to, you know, that's why it'd be really good if you could get, like, I would realign this guy a little bit further inside. Make it seem like this guy has outside leverage here. I've done that in the game too, right? So, you know, your opponent may, okay, I got blitz coming. Uh, oh, wow, this guy looks like he can, maybe I can call an out route or something. You snap the ball and then you throw that out pattern right into the corner, right? Because he's eyeing the number two and he's going to jump that route. The whole idea of it is, you know, you want to get a big hit or um, best case scenario and interception, okay? Second best scenario is to get a sack on the quarterback. Okay, but you're not going to get that really in this game if they just call an extra blocker or if they have five blocking your five rushers. It's really how it is in this game. Okay, um, there are exceptions, I would think, and uh, hopefully I'll get into that. Okay, so we should see that here. We should see, see how the corner kind of made it seem as if he's running, running with the number one and then he jumps down on that, that out pattern. Okay, so I noticed something there while I was playing because in that instance, I don't like the logic of the safety. So the safety should be reading the number two, right? If number two goes flat, then your next step is to make sure you top the number one because now the corner is not going to be with the number one being that, you know, you have that out, that flat pattern here. Okay, so you don't have the corner underneath sinking underneath that player softening you know narrowing the window for the quarterback to throw to the number one watch what happens here here's where i notice it's like you see how he kind of just drifts off in the space he's defending grass there's no one there there's no threat not even from backside coming to his area he could literally be in albuquerque and be playing the same amount of defense that he's playing here okay so the logic here is terrible he saw the number two go out, so get your eyes on the number one. When you see the number one fight to get inside, he should be more so here, okay? So think about the different route concepts we can design based upon that bad logic to attack that safety when you're playing trap two, right? Why not have this guy go to the flat and then have that outside receiver run like a post pattern because you're just gonna drift off in the space. That's the logic that they have behind the safety. The logic with the safety is not right. That's what I'm getting at in trap two. It's just not right. Okay. So then I, I went and did this because that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out the logic that Madden has coded in the game. So how about we do something like this? Now in trap two, because they're looking at the number two, when the number two goes upfield, then this corner plays underneath this receiver he's kind of squatting underneath and like a traditional cover two and he's looking to take away um, the window available for the quarterback to rip it in there and the safety should be over the top playing deep half which he is here now in that instance when this number two goes up field your second defender in who's over him will convert to man coverage on a vertical route from that player so that's the benefit of trap two with your second defender in he will match the number two on a vertical route in that particular route distribution okay so i went and did this to see how they have it coded right okay how about we do that we bring him up and we bring a drag route okay so will this guy match that vertical pattern 
man, will this corner just sit in his cover two responsibilities while this guy should be wide open for a drag because we ripped that guy um, up the field because he's supposed to match the vertical two? At least theoretically is what we're thinking. But he doesn't, which is good. He stays down um, to help out on that, right? Not all the way, but he just doesn't leave that window wide open. So what does that tell us? That tells us that maybe this guy, the way they have it coded, you know, I'm not talking about real football. He's reading the number one, while the corner and the safety is reading, should be reading the number two. So if number one goes inside like that, then he just stays in his responsibility. The, you know, the... Uh, vertical hook, seam hook type of deal. Okay. So think about the route combination that we could put together to mess that up. How about we put this guy on a drag pattern and then we just have this guy on a post pattern. Now, what do you think logically should happen, right? Well, this corner should I would like for him to get hands on him in that particular instance if he takes an inside release, at least some type of disruption, and then he should, you know, climb up field. And I, I would like for him to get his eyes on the number two. Okay, now you, you, I know you're saying, well, who cares what you would like because it's not in the game, but I'm going to get to my point and what I think Madden should have. You know, get your, you're reading the number two, you see the number two goes up field. And you got a feel for this guy running drag, get your hands on him. And then I would like for him to squeeze on whatever route this guy is running. Okay. Um, in this instance, you know, play your radical, red, regular vertical hook because you read the number one coming inside. But I would want the safety to top the number two now. Watch what Madden does with this. You see that safety there? I, I didn't have him on a post. I had him going upfield. Does it look like he's playing man-to-man -man on this guy? He's not. He's just drifting off into space. You know, drip, You know, he's, he's going to, you know, Mars, wherever he's going. He's not playing football, I tell you that. You see the problem with that? So why not we, we can look for a play from this two-by-two -two set with the inside receiver running a post, which I did. I think I went to deep attack there. Okay. Okay, so we'll have him going on the post and then we'll just audible this guy to a drag to force these two players to be underneath because we know the safety is gonna drift off into space and the post pattern should be wide open, right? That's what I was thinking. So I snapped the ball and what do you know? Look how open he is. And look where this safety, like this guy, oh my, it's just so bad guys. Like he's going, like he's, he's going like off the field. Watch this safety, man. Watch him. Look where he's going. Okay, he's the only one you should, like, at least top the route. But no, hey, it's just the, the way they have it coded in the game. It's, uh, no, we're just going to have him going, like, to the end zone. Enjoying what's happening in front of him, right? So that's what I mean by this. The defense in this game is so messed up um, that it's really hard to play adequate defense in this game you know your best bet because again another problem is you don't get enough pressure with the front four and when you blitz you don't get enough pressure at least adequate pressure you never get anyone coming free you can never really confuse the offensive line protection because they design the game in a way in which the offense automatically knows who's coming and from where and they pick up the blitz automatically they don't put it on the user to figure out how to you know protect the the passer they don't. They, they just they do it for you. And I know why they did that. It's to cloak their laziness because they, they got sick and tired. At least this is what I'm assuming. They got sick and tired of people crying about nano blitzing. Hey, you know, um, 
a guy overloads this side and you know no matter what i do i can't protect against it okay that is a legitimate complaint you know you would have something like your tackle guard center guard tackle and they would come out in like an under front right and maybe your tight end here you know had the three technique you know defensive end here you know you're one here okay so you know he would come that's his gap and he would take the responsibility of the center okay so that's the beauty of the under front as well you know it really is good with your three technique because it gets your three technique one-on-one -on -one with the guard so think about your players like uh lovey smith when he had tommy harris in his cover too um there's a guy on the box i can't remember his name oh warren sap right just absolutely destroy teams because he's already a, a monster as a defensive tackle but you put him one-on-one -on -one as a pass rushing tackle by putting your defense in the under front to get him with more one-on-one -on -one opportunities against the guard right so your five technique would come here and what that would ha what that would do is the guard would be responsible for him and the tackle would be responsible for him so how about we bring somebody like a sam on a blitz on this side it would be really hard for the defense i'm talking about past games to pick up this guy that would be one overload pressure you can design in the game right um so guys would complain about that because not this particular blitz because there would be ways to counter that you know maybe you would slide left to pick that up um etc um but people would come up with blitzes i'm sure you've seen them where you could be blocking seven guys and they would still get in with three players okay and they would complain about that instead of madden figuring out that there's a blocking there's a problem with the way we have the, the game coded and protection scheme you know so if i see that you're coming with three on one side and i slide there with enough guys and they still don't pick it up it's not a problem with the pressure scheme it's a problem with your game and you giving us the ability like the offensive line the logic to pick it up so instead of them fixing that they just made it to where okay from now on we'll just have the line do it for you they automatically know where the defense is coming from and they'll just pick it up for you you don't even have to think about offensive line protection schemes that's why zone blitzes in this game suck that's why blitzing in this game is not good as long as you just have enough people blocking they'll pick it up etc you know so you know it's just another thing they have just wrong with the game it's just the pass protection schemes is not you're you're not responsible for it you don't even have to think right so that's what i mean my defenses in this game is horrible like it's just it's really hard to design a scheme that's you know football sound and not gimmicky and you know explain the bugs of the game where you can actually you know dominate the game you know getting your opponent's head and etc so my solution to that problem is something I, I think that they should add in the game and i know they won't is how about you allow us to design our own logic in the game that would solve everything right that would solve if i get in the game and i notice that you don't have that trap cover to safety doing what he's supposed to do how about you make it to where i can put in the logic for him to do it right so from this point forward players from all over the world we won't even we don't you know we don't care how you code the game before launch when i get in the game i can sit in the practice field and just design up logic and rules for my players for myself you know and you should have it to where we can um you know load that logic onto the game and we can share that logic with players from around the world think about how creative and interesting that would be for people around the world you would have sim guys who love real football like drooling over that we we would have probably whole podcasts and stuff like that hey this is what i do and cover four against trips i have the logic for this corner to do this the nickel corner to do this just designing very creative things okay now the problem with that is because you're playing people online and they don't have any history on you like players do in the league you know like in the league um i believe the ravens played the chiefs last night i mean the chiefs and the ravens have film on the other team from the past 20 years you know 
so they can they know what you like what you like to do well you don't have that in madden because you're playing a random opponent so that puts you at a disadvantage when someone designs a new defense so what i thought is you should have it to where you know during the game i can take a look at the concepts that you like to run the different logic and rules you have set for your players in different uh you know defensive coverages you know i should be able to look at that during the game now that may be a problem because you don't want somebody sitting there and taking forever looking at it so i thought that your field goal kicking meter and all that crap i think you should just take that out of the game shouldn't even be in the game it's already gimmicky another thing that they have like just messed up you ever notice that the kicking meter seems different at times with the same player and it messes you up online you know uh, at the fact that you know some of the online is like it delays a little bit because we're playing online so it's kind of stupid for me to have to measure when the thing is going to come for me to kick accurately it's just a terrible system so what i think you should do is when i kick when i pick field goal kick at 50 yards that should be automatic not the pass protection scheme but my the kicking game i think should be automatic where we don't even we just watch it and you as the coach during that whole animation of him coming out and kicking the ball that's when you get to look at your opponent's defensive schemes, what he likes to do, rules, logic, and all that type of stuff. You would have, you know, who knows how long it is for the kicking team to go out and do that, but maybe 40 seconds. That would give the opponent a break to go use a bathroom if you want anything. I would use that time to look at the logic of uh, what he likes to do. So in that instance, let's say you have uh, Robbie Gold. What the, what the game can do is they can take – all the percentages from Robbie Gold at that distance, let's say he's 70% good at, at making a field goal from 50 yards. Well, then you have a 70% chance of making the field goal, right? You should be able to, you should get those percentages before you choose to kick. So if it's fourth and three on their 25, and you're like, okay, uh, you know, let me, let me go ahead and kick the field goal, it should show your percentage, hey, Robbie Gold, nine, you know, 90%. From this go uh, down in distance on the left hash, so if you want to pick it, you can pick it. If you don't like the percentage, you don't like it, you want to go ahead and go for it, you can. Okay, but if you do choose kick, you know you don't get to control any meter or nothing like that. You just the whole animation and the scene of the kicker coming out and getting ready to kick. That's what should be going on. But then you should have menus on the side where you get to take a look at your opponent's logic and all that type of stuff. You know, if they have different logic and rules that they have for specific coverages. That's my idea in the game because, you know, that would take a lot of, think about that, that would take a lot of pressure off of them to get coverages right because they're just not getting them right. They're not. It's, it's horrible. So how about you leave it in the hands of us? That, that, that would take a lot of complaint. We would, you know, the, a lot of the sim guys, we wouldn't even have any issues like I'm not going to complain about the way you have cover four covered because I can code it myself in the game. I can design my own coverages. I, I would want it to where we can design what gaps a particular person is responsible for, the run fits, all that stuff. And you can't tell me that it's impossible for them to implement that in the game because all all different types of games has create a map mode, you know, build a scheme, you know, all types of build stuff for the players to do on their own. Madden's been out for 20 some years. Um, they should be far capable of doing that. Although they've shown the incapability of coding basic coverages right. I think on their last patch, um, this is what I've heard. When you call cover four quarters, it drops into spot drop coverage against trips formations now. They don't even check into solo. They don't even check into, it's this. you know, it is what it is, so. See what else I got here. So yeah, so defensive logic is wrong. I mean, think about it. If you had, where well, we can code our own stuff, this entire category would be gone. You know, your defensive logic is wrong and cover four against trips. Well, it doesn't matter because I can code my own logic. Um, you know, that's it on that. It's probably, this video is probably really long, uh, but I, that's why I try to veer away from rants because when I ran about the game, it's just there's so much to talk about because they just have so much wrong. So leave it at that. I hope you come back and keep grinding.